it's now time for store time, but before store time comes along, uh, um, I want to say thanks to God for, you know, protecting over our pastor, because while our pastor was there helping me to do something, he fell off the ladder. So, but, you know, he was okay, and I praise God for that. And, you know, we can replace the other thing that got damaged, but we can replace our dear pastor again. So we're thankful to have him here today. You know, everything went well. We didn't got any, but it remember, it remind, I remember that story that Elder Charles Stanley told about the ladder. Richard. Yes, Stanley. Sorry, Richard Stanley. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Charles. Richard Stanley told about the ladder that you're not supposed to go on top of that ladder. Because what will happen, will happen. So, you know, that children's story always was in my mind to never go on top of the ladder. Because that will happen. <laughs> so we, we're supposed to listen intently to these stories that are being told in church for a story time, okay? <laughs> Brother Dennis will do a story time today. Exactly right when, on, on our heat race. 
when I'm racing, he goes, it's, he goes, usually you start, well, this is back before they had the rolling, the rolling starts, you just park on the racetrack, and then he goes, racers, on your mark, get set, go. Well, he wasn't going to say it that way, he's going to go, racers, get ready, on your mark, set, go. And when he says set, he's going to bring the green flag down and say go. And everyone else is going to wait for that two-second interval. And so he figured he might get a half a second head start. He says, if I get to that first corner first, he said, no one will pass me. Because his bike just put down more power. Well, I go, okay, let me know how that goes. Well, the following week, I, had, I couldn't be there that weekend. So I was out of town. So... The following week, I see him in the business where I was working, and I kind of wave him, and he comes over, and goes, how'd it go? He goes, let me show you a picture. And he, has, he pulled out his picture, I don't have it here, I'm afraid. I didn't get a copy. But it showed two motorcycles, one of them in front, and, and then the rear wheel, and then the front wheel was about this far from the front wheel of the next bike following him. And I go, is that you leading? He goes, yeah. And he goes, who's that behind you? Kenny. <laughs> and I go, really? I says, how fast are you doing? He says, oh, 140, 150, maybe 60 miles an hour. It's pretty quick. And I go, wow. I go, congratulations. It was, how'd the race go? And he goes, oh, man. He was just like I thought it would, just like I planned it. He goes, I, you know, I'm on the track. And he says, I was, you know, and he goes, the starter, Racers, on your mark, get ready, set go. And he says, I, when he said set, I jerk forward on the, on the handlebars, lay on the seat, on the, on the fuel tank to print, put the weight forward. And he says, I dropped the clutch and hammered it. And he says, I just revved that thing to full screen between every ear. And he says, I got to the first corner. And he says, I looked. And Kenny was right where I knew he would be, behind him. And he got in the first corner, and Kenny was known for breaking late and going past me in corners. But when he saw my bike and started jumping, he goes, he backed off just like I knew it would. And then he backing off, he lost his momentum. So I got to the second corner, the third corner, the fourth corner. And he got to the back straight. That's another straightaway to match the main straight to the front. And he says, he came up and he says, I just, I hit the corner hard and came out of it. He says, and he came, came out breaking hard. And he comes up right up beside me and up about this far. And I had more power, even though he had momentum. And he's like this, and pretty soon he fades back. He says, that is in the next corner. And the bike starts bouncing me back soft because he doesn't want to get in my crash. You know, he doesn't want to crash with me. And so I bounced around the corner and, and got around to, and then got clear around to all the other corners and got to the front the main straight again. And he says, I put my head right on the tank practically to the, if he touched the tank, his, his vision was a blur, but he did his better wind the aerodynamics, you know. So he's up there, you know, and his, his head's just tapping the tank. And Kenny pulls up kind of beside him like this and has to pull him behind. Didn't have enough power to pass him. He said, went through the second lap, and it was the same way. Well, the third lap, the, the racing tires that he bought, he had the same kind of tires that Kenny had, and they were all up to racing temperature. And he hit that first corner after the straightaway on the second, after the second lap, on the third lap, and he says, his bike was just bouncing like a wild beast. He goes, man, his bucking horse couldn't have been any more. He said, they were just all over, like bouncing. Bouncing, it, bouncing. It. He's all of a sudden, right in the corner, it kind of the bike just kind of steady. You know, it's kind of pulsing like this. And he felt something on his back. He was, God, what's that? You know, I'm doing 140 or well, no, at that point he'd be doing about 100 miles an hour. And he man, something's on my back. He looks over, and here's Kenny with his knee on his side of his motorcycle, patting him on the back. <laughs> You know, and then, then he, and then when they got through the main part of the corner, he just raised it. Oh, it took just a second or two, and he raised.
raised, raised his knee off the bike, and his bike kind of started doing this a little bounce a little bit. And he gives, Kenny just gave him a big thumbs up to the local guy, you know, and this went on through into the next corner with his big thumbs up. And uh, he didn't win that race because somebody passed him on the outside and trusted him enough that he wasn't going to crash. That's one thing Kenny was good at. He knew he could quickly analyze the riders. He went through and he didn't even qualify for the main race, but he did get a chance to race with the best guy in the world. Now, I asked him, he didn't seem that upset. And I asked him, yeah, you don't seem that upset. I was, oh man, he said, I fought that bike as hard as I could fight it. He says, I raced a good race. He goes, in fact, I beat my own track record by almost a second. And he goes, uh, he goes, no, he says, I did what I had to do. You know, that's almost the same thing Paul said in what was it, Timothy and Hebrews and I think a couple other places. He goes, he goes, you know, I've raced a good race, I've fought a good fight, and now God is going to give me the blessings of a, of a win. We're all going to find some time in our life where there's going to be somebody faster, stronger, smarter, better looking, better something, you know, just there's going to be somebody. And it doesn't matter because it's not who they are, it's who you are. Because God wants us to be engaged. He wants us to be in the race, not just a spectator. He wants us to be in the race, doing something. And it may not be even a race. It may be a Bible study. It could be, you know, cooking a meal for somebody. It could be anything. But he wants us to be fully engaged in what we're doing so that he can bless us with the, with the things that he wants to bless us with. And when we do that, he will give us the talents to accomplish it in the best manner possible. Okay, right, this part heads for prayer. Dear Lord, Thank you for being with us. Help us to be engaged in our Christian activities and with in, engaged in Christian ways with the people around us. So that in the end, you'll give us a big thumbs up when you come again. For Jesus' sake.